In this section, we're going to discuss what global illumination is, how to create some render presets so you can use them in your projects going forward, and how to use the render history to compare renders and render times. So I've just opened up our studio scene from the resources. And first up, what is global illumination? I'm just going to open up our frame buffer to demonstrate here. And I just want to show you this, this render. We've got some lights in this scene and they're coming from the right here and there's one in the left. And when light hits an object like the ground, it doesn't just stop. It actually bounces off of that object and then bounces onto another one and then bounces off and bounces on another one and it just keeps on bouncing. And this creates indirect illumination. So if lights just stopped when they hit an object, we'd end up with something like this. And there's no light bouncing up here, for example. The lights are just stopping. When a light hits an object, it doesn't just stop. It bounces off of that surface and it keeps on bouncing. So the light picks up color information from the objects it's hitting and it keeps on bouncing. And this creates indirect illumination. So if the light came in from here and bounced off of this surface, it's bouncing light under here and it's lighting this up. And if it just stopped, we'd end up with an image like this, where the light's hitting this surface and just stopping. So these areas wouldn't get lit, and that isn't very realistic. So V-Ray uses something we call an irradiance map to calculate the indirect illumination. And we use this as the main way to feel light in our scenes. So this example shows an image without global illumination on and this image shows it with it on. So to turn on indirect illumination, let's go over to the render settings. You can press F10 or click up here. And the GI should be enabled by default. You can click up here to get to this tab. And we're gonna look at creating some draft settings. So this will produce rougher but quicker results. Um, just quickly before we go any deeper into this tab, I just wanna jump into V-Ray and make sure you've got bucket selected. We'll be using bucket for this example. So let's change the primary engine to irradiance map and open this drop down. And the first thing we're going to want to do is change this to low. And in our secondary engine, we have light cache. And this dictates what happens after the light hits the surface for the first time. Light cache is cool because it produces pretty good results in a pretty quick time. So let's bring the light cache down to 300 so we can get quick draft settings. And you'll notice that I have show calc phase on here and here. Uh, I'm just going to turn these off and just show you what that does. So if I hit render, you'll see it's, it's going on and we've got a final image rendering now with the draft settings. So if I stop that and we turn both of these back on and then hit render, we'll actually see the calculation phase of the render. and this can be pretty helpful as we can see while we're waiting for the results of the final render, we can just make sure that our camera isn't behind a wall or we've got problems with the geometries. So I like to keep this on so we can see that everything is working well in the calculation phases. If I just hit render again, you'll see up here pre-passes. And the number of pre-passes is dictated by this min and max rate on the irradiance map. So on the low settings, we are getting two passes. And if I switch this to medium and hit render, you'll notice we get three passes. I'll stop that and I'm going to change it to high. And hit render and you'll notice that we got four pre-passes and as you may have guessed the more passes the better the image so let's just change that back to low I'm just gonna hit render and these are gonna be our draft settings so we can save these and we can then load them into other scenes so to do this we just have to go into the render setup And here where it says presets, just hit this drop down and hit save. And I'm going to save that as draft and just hit save. 
Now this dialog is going to pop up and all we want to do is save the V-Ray next settings. If we start saving common and environments, we're actually going to start affecting the way the render comes out. We just want to save the V-Ray settings. So we can hit save. And I also quickly want to show you the V-Ray history. So this H down here is the render history within the V-Ray frame buffer. And as you can see, it's keeping some of the images. So to turn this on, you hit the button here. And if you go to the settings, I've got mine set to desktop. And you can hit OK. And what this does is save images to the desktop. So we've just rendered this um, with our draft settings. So I'm going to hit the save button here. And you can see that our renders then saved. It's got some other information like the size and how long it took. So now if we change our render settings to high, so we can change the irradiance map to high and let's change the light cache to 1000 and let's hit render again we can see that render took a little longer i'm just going to hit save and we can see that took 21 and a half seconds i'm just going to save these settings in the preset so I'm going to go down to save preset and call this one high, save and just the V-Ray settings. So we hit save. So now we can access these two settings whenever we like. We can just hit this drop down and find it here if we've used it recently or we can go to load and load up the settings here. So now we can double click and go through and see any of these in our history. Another cool feature is if I select a when I've got this one selected and then B on this we've then got an A and B comparison so we can then use this slider to compare the settings and we can see it lightly up here and down here what's what our settings do so that's a really nice way to quickly compare renders you can also hold and drop that down and do an AB from top to bottom so that's how global illumination works and how you can save render presets and use the V-Ray frame buffer history.